Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have a little bit different of a video and a little delayed for good reason. And that is the review of the 23.2 patch notes, which just went public a couple minutes ago. So by the time this is live, these patch notes will have been public for like half an hour or so. And it, the total patch, the patch in whole, will be live tomorrow, approximately 24 hours from the posting of this video. Buddy Meta is over. We are done with Buddy Meta. And now we have Naga meta. The new meta introduces a brand new tribe, new battleground seasons, updates to a few game modes. We're gonna focus on battlegrounds here, obviously. And overall is really gonna have a fundamental change to the core gameplay by removing key cards such as Amalgadon and removing the core buddy system, which was introduced last patch. So goodbye buddies. I know it's a mixed bag when it comes to players thinking whether or not they really liked or disliked buddies being in the game. But myself personally, very, very, very happy to see them go. I think buddies were a very good introduction into this game. Let's make me a little bit bigger here. Hey, what's up? I'm a little bit bigger now. But they, they limit design space to a level that if you continue to try to build on top of the buddy system. The game just bloats and bloats and bloats. It was fun to have, it was interesting for a while. Glad it was introduced and glad it's going away. That overall was a very good season, a very interesting season that felt different than the others, but look forward to what Blizzard can do to build a interesting system without buddies going in the future. All right, now let's jump into it. So basically there's a, a fundamental minion pool change that we're gonna jump to first. It's not sequentially in these patch notes. Scrolling down. But it's important to note in order to really grasp the changes in this, this patch. The changes include the minion pool dropping five core minions that existed in the game prior to now. Champion of Yasarge, Deadly Spore, Amalgadon, Seafood Slinger, and Captain Flat Tusk. Of those you might not be familiar with what Champion of Yasarge is from the name because it's a very underplayed unit. That's this guy right here, Champion of Yasarge. Whenever a friendly taunt minion is attacked, gain 1-1 one, one permanently. Very underutilized minion, a very strong minion in a few niche scenarios. Got a lot more play back in taunt comp meta about a year ago, but it's kind of fallen out of favor. And when you're creating new cards and adding new cards, then stuff needs to go away. Otherwise you dilute the pool and you make it rarer and rarer and rarer to find triples. Looks like Champion was the sacrificial lamb and kind of had to go. Goodbye, Champion. You were useful in specific situations, but I don't think you fundamentally changed the game. It's time for you to go the way of the boat. Other than that, you guys know Spore. Poison is now being limited or redistributed to other units in the pool. Amalgadon, gone. Fundamental huge change to the game. No more Amalgadons. Seafood Slinger. Very, very, very necessary change. This was the tool that was causing runaway conditions with Bran plus Amalgadon plus Primal Fin plus Tad and ending up in scenarios where in one turn you could go from any board to a board full of Amalgadons. Remove Amalgadon, remove Seafood Slinger, and yeah, that's gone. We don't have to deal with that anymore. And removal of Flat Tusk is opening up the room for a new six-star Quill Bore, which we'll get to in a moment. Coming back, our Nightmare Amalgam. The is now a three star three four as a all tribe minion, effectively taking the place of Amalgadon to make late game minions, but you have to build your own Amalgadon and can't just get lucky with Brand to build Poison Divine Shield very, very quickly. Additionally, this is the first time they've announced this. This was not in the previews, but Bristleback Knight has returned as a five attack minion. For those of you that do not remember what Bristleback Knight was, it's a five star Quill Bore. This card, Wind Fury Divine Shield Frenzy, Gain Divine Shield. Frenzy keywords back. That is when this minion is damaged but not killed, trigger Frenzy, gain Divine Shield. So in other words, if you have this minion attack into something, it'll lose its shield on the first hit. Then it hits something that doesn't do eight damage to it. The Bristleback Knight regains its Divine Shield. This can only proc once, but it's effectively a potential double Divine Shield minion. This becomes one of the best recipients late game for things like moving entire Blood Gym stacks via Necrolite or putting massive buffs. Think about boards that uh, play toward like Bran and whatnot that build huge stat buff boards. Bristleback Knight's one of the premium minions to get those, those effects on. And when we remove cards like, like Amalgadon, keep cards like Prestor's Pyrospawn in the game, 
and we still have mech roll, cards like this, these Wind Fury minions, are absolutely necessary to deal with the taunted mech roll type of plays, where people are trying to reset minions multiple times. Having multiple Wind Fury minions uh, screws up attack orders. You end up countering Bran and Bar or Baron boards. It's a very healthy card to exist in the game, and I'm very, very, very happy to see this one back. All right, jumping into the core Naga minions. There's also a, one last thing we should probably do before this point, is that the armor system is completely revamped yet again. Armors that applied to heroes that had buddies being changed substantially, it makes sense that they would revert it back to its original form or its form before buddies, so that we don't have, you know, X hero that had a really good buddy that then made it a better armor tier. No longer has the buddy, so it no, no longer deserves to be in that better armor tier. Makes sense, right? So there's a lot of those tier one heroes that exist up here that weren't tier one heroes before. And a lot of heroes got moved back down tavern tiers, like Cariel, for example, like Sarafang, like Wagtoggle, like Tamsin, like Curator, that were better in buddy meta. But once they lose their buddies, they need that armor back. Not going to go through every one of these tiers. AFK is a very good example, right? From tier zero up here or tier one, all the way back down into the bottom group. Lich Bazal as well, Guff, that were very, very good with buddies and not very good without buddies. So you can go through this in your own time. There are, is, you know, 80 or whatever heroes here. Not going to go through that all together. But a lot of good changes there. All right, let's run down all of the new cards real quick. For those of you that are Twitch viewers, people that are around the Twitch stream, I will be live here in about an hour from the time this video posts. I'm going to be doing Q&A and patch discussion pretty much straight through the stream. It happens every time we have patch notes and we'll probably do four, five, six hours worth of patch discussion. Additionally, I will probably be posting an additional video this evening that will do like a consolidated rating system for like the new cards that we'll probably do live on stream. So if you guys are around, you'll see that one live today. If not, keep an eye on the YouTube channel. It'll get posted later tonight. And then back to gameplay going forward after this point. All right, all right. So the patch goes live tomorrow, as was noted. Ratings will be reset. New season starts. For those of you that are following the Lobby Legends season, Lobby Legends Noble Garden has its semifinals and finals this upcoming weekend. I am involved in that top 16. I mean, I should say that I am one of the top 16 contenders. So as of tomorrow, we have a brand new meta. And as of like, 90 hours or 80 hours from the point that they introduce the new meta, we have to play a 50 grand tournament. He says have to, involved in a very big tournament. I'm honored to be involved in a big tournament, right? But yeah, that's going to be a learning curve right there. Better get it right and better get it right quick. So we're going to be trying to figure out this game very quickly this patch. The cost to upgrade taverns has been reduced back to its original form. That was specifically Tavern 5 before. That was increased by 2 gold so that you couldn't power level straight to 5. In the buddy meta, there were a couple buddies that enabled you to get a lot of gold very quickly. Barov and Krag came to mind. And when you end up in those kind of scenarios, power leveling the 5 was too strong. They nerfed it. And now the buddies are gone. Once again, Tavern tier cost has gone back down. So like, Jeef Curve leveling straight to 5 which was situational. Reform curve straight to five, which was a little bit more popular. Those kind of lines, back on the menu, boys. We have power leveling back. Here's with transforming hero powers can now see their next stage of hero power by hovering over it. I did ask for clarification on this one from a dev because I thought maybe this was the buff Rat King deserved. No, it doesn't include Rat King. This is just like for Rag or Rana, so the tooltip itself, you can cursor over to see what your final hero power is going to be. Great for new players learning the game. I was really hoping it was going to show me what Rat King gets the next turn, so I knew if I needed to freeze or whatnot. No. The dream is dead. Rat King didn't get buffed. And last but not least, cards and hero powers of the text for the next combat, or for next combat only, have been updated to read until next turn. Just a consistency change to make sure wording is the same. All right, the new tribe is adding a new keyword called Spellcraft. Effectively, Spellcraft you can think of like a battle cry effect that triggers at the start of every turn. Spellcraft creates a spell that puts, gets put in your hand as soon as the minion that, you, that has Spellcraft on it is played to the board. So basically, like if you play a minion that has Spellcraft on it, say Spellcraft, give a minion plus two attack. 
You play the minion to the board, the plus two attack spell gets added to your hand and you can target it on any minion you want. That spell must be used before the end of the turn or else it disappears. And then at the start of every subsequent turn, you get that spell added back to your hand. Additional thing to note here is that the spell will not fizzle if your hand is full, very similar to the buddy system where if your hand was full, as soon as you open a board space, or hand space I should say, the spell will then be added to your hand. Unlike blood gems, for example, if you have like say, for example, a gem splitter that generates too many blood gems, if you run out of hand space, you destroy the blood gem. So spellcraft minions are on that new mechanic, or spellcraft spells I should say, have that new mechanic with a backfill into your hand, which is really cool, quality of life updates. And for the next first few weeks of the patch, Naga will be included in every lobby, just like any new tribe. It's gonna be two weeks where there's nine total tribes, five of them in each, in each game. Naga will be one of them. So basically a 50-50 for every other tribe, whether or not it's going to be in the game. Four out of eight additional tribes outside of Naga will be included. Cool. So we're gonna be able to play Naga all the time. It's gonna get the same like the quill board treatment where it's like oh my god naga this is awesome and then by the end of two weeks you're like please rotate <laughs> we need some variety especially when they're super 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 powerful right new hero ashara passive when your warband reaches 30 total attack begin your naga conquest kind of like arana has this initial state and then once you complete your hero power you get a one gold hero power discover a naga the synergies of completing this, this hero, this hero power, completing the quest, if you will. First one that comes to mind is like Chroma Wing, Ground Shaker with Gem Splitter, that, or Gems, all those kind of lines to cheese out 30 attack onto the board so you can finish your hero power. I don't think you're gonna be rushing this thing down too heavily. Don't sacrifice the middle of the game to get a hero power that is very good, but is not like game, or you know, earth shatteringly OP levels of good. Seems like a decent hero. It's hard to gauge in a vacuum how strong this is going to be because we all have very clouded views of how strong heroes are with buddy system being in. But having cheap and easy access to minions that do triple is going to be even more strong in a meta that is not dictated by streamlined lines that are created by buddies. So we'll see. I think she's relatively decent. I think like low tier two, high tier three. Not like busted by any means, but playable. Huh. Weird, introducing a hero that isn't immediately busted. I am unfamiliar with this. <laughs> All right, as of the Naga minions, tier one, one three, mini Mir Mirmadan. Spellcraft, give a minion plus two attack until next turn. This is the spell that we alluded to, the plus two attack spell. Basically a three three on tavern one, pretty strong, enables spellcraft synergies later. Not a bad minion, not a terrible minion. Not as busted as I think a lot of people are gauging that 3-3 is super strong. Don't get me wrong. You win early rounds. But is winning early rounds absolutely the most important thing to you? Additionally, a very popular choice on Tavern 1 is also going to be Shell Collector. A Tavern 1 Naga. Also Tribal Naga. 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 3 attack, 1 health, add a coin to your hand. Think about a start of a game, first four turns, first five turns of a game, when you have Shell Collector turn one versus Mini Myrmidon turn one. Sure, you have a nice flexible spell that's being added here, but I'd much rather have a gold coin in the early turn, especially if you're not leveling the two. I mean, even if you are leveling the two, having the extra gold to be able to put an extra minion on the board on that awkward five gold turn is incredibly important. And there's a reason why Selemental, Alley Cat, and in the past, Murloc Tidehunter was so heavily prioritized by players in early turns. Because that one extra gold is an extra minion. And an extra minion far outweighs a couple stats on a minion like this. So while strong, don't get me wrong, strong, not busted, in my opinion. You can probably make this ever so slightly bigger. There's only so much screen space that we can have here. We could also do that to make everything absolutely the biggest possible. Shell Collector, Tavern 1. Oh, we already went through this. This is the coin one. All right, the Tavern 2 minions are actually kind of busted. Tavern 2 Naga, Deep Sea Angler, 2 attack, 2 health, Spellcraft, give a minion, plus 3 health and taunt until next turn. So in other words, this minion is a 2-2 two -two on the board and you can target something to give it 3 health and taunt each turn. Assuming that your minions are relatively similar size to the Deep Sea Angler herself, you're talking about a 2 gold or a tier 2, 2-5, two which is a very good stat line. Slightly worse than Yoho, but you're not going to be targeting this on itself, right? 
this thing's gonna go on the biggest minion that you can early in the game and allow it to double trade or potentially even triple trade. And keeping this minion around in the middle, the better your minions that you can put on the board, the better this minion's effect or the spell itself gets. So like think of this like Brucon hero power using the water invocation. Early in the game, there are some very, very important cards to give extra health to. Think of Trickster in Demons. Think of Divine Shield minions that have high attack, like say for example, a Tough Tusk, when you have a Blood Gem to play on it. And you can basically two for one, three for one minions, and then have a two, two body behind it. Very strong card, not game breaking by any means, but very strong. On the other hand, now let's get into more game breaking cards. Snail Cavalry, Tavern two, two or five, two minion, Naga Tribe as well, even though it's a snail. It's the Naga on the snail. Snail bro is pretty cool. Once per turn, after you cast a spell, gain two health. You're telling me we have scaling on Tavern 2? This never goes well, guys. This never, ever, 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 ever goes well. Having scaling as early as Tavern 2 is busted. Think about Sarlisk. Think about Wrathweaver. Those two cards may not seem that oppressive right now when you consider the fact that we just had buddy meta. But cards like this, especially cards like this when you get multiple copies of them that can scale off of the same effect being occurring. Say, for example, playing a Death Rattle on Sarlisk. Well, that's a lot of stats very quickly over the course of the game. And when you don't have to spend any resources to get the new spell, <clears throat> if you have anything like, say, for example, Mini Mirbadon, a spellcraft minion on the board that gives you a spell naturally to your hand at the start of every turn, this is just a 5-4 the first turn you play it then a 5-6, then a 5-8. And we're not talking late into the game that like, oh my god, 5-8's not a big deal. We're talking a 5-8 on like turn four, turn five, you know? Okay, we'll say five. The only real way you get this thing turn four is if you tripled into a two and that's not gonna happen. So turn five, five eights. That's a lot of stats when you don't have buddies that are interacting in this game. We'll see, but I think Snail Cavalry definitely needs a nerf. This card looks way too strong. Lava Lurker, Tavern 2 Naga, 2, two attack, 5 health. First spellcraft spell cast on this each turn is permanent. All right, now we're busted. Snail Cavalry may be strong. Lava Lurker is busted. Like busted, busted. Think about all these spells that we're seeing, the things that we're going to get, the 3 health permanently applied to the minion. The 2 attack permanently applied to the minion. And we haven't even gotten to the good spellcraft cards yet. Just think about scaling permanently on minions on Tavern 2. This is not something that really exists in this game outside of a couple niche units, and there's a good reason for it. Stormscale Siren. Tavern Tier 3 Naga, 5 health, 4 attack. At the end of your turn, your spellcraft minions cast spells on themselves. Hmm, you can see where this is going. More and more spellcraft synergy, more and more spells. 5-4 minion on Tavern 3 is relatively strong. The more spellcraft minions, the better value you get. Seems good. Seems like if it you have the right board set up, it's very strong. If you have the not the right board set up, then it's relatively weak. That sounds like a balanced card. Good for the game. This one seems pretty balanced. Shoal Commander. Tier 3 Naga, 2 attack, 2 health. Spellcraft giving minion plus 1 for each. Friendly Naga until next turn. Yeah, I misread this one when I initially saw it. A lot of people called me on that in patch notes. Yeah, yeah, I'm dumb sometimes. Whoops. I read it as if it was like spawn in the Zoth. Now, give a minion 1-1 one, one for each friendly Naga until next turn. Hmm, you can see where this is going. Good card, becomes like a 5-5, five, five, a 6-6, six, six, or whatever in the middle of the game. Especially if you could permanently put like a 3-3 three, three, or 4-4 four, four buff on a Lava Lurker each turn. Maybe cast on itself as well. These synergies, you can see them. They start to stack. The more Naga synergy you have, the better off a new Naga card is when added to your board. Seems decent, doesn't seem overpowered, but very strong in the right situations. Pashmar the Vengeful. 4-5, Tavern 3 Naga, Avenge 3, get a Spellcraft spell of your tier or lower. Now, I don't know if we've ever had clarifications on how this card works. We're going to assume that Spellcraft cards themselves always disappear at the end of the turn, so you can't bank these things for later. But effectively, this card is a decent body, a 4, a 3 cost, or 3 star, 4-5, that generates multiple procs potentially of extra spells per turn 
extra two attack spells mean nothing. But extra spells, especially from higher tavern tiers, once you level up to four or potentially five, they start to get very, very, very strong. And this card specifically, like in gold, you could be generating six to eight extra spells that then give extra health, give extra stats, etc., etc. And this snowballs pretty hard, right? Avenge is a very powerful mechanic, especially without buddies being in. Seems like this one has potential to be very busted. We shall see, though. Avenge on Tavern 3, but not permanent value. So it's not quite the same as generating gold off Doomsayer or Witchwing, right? Wave Rider, Tavern 4, or Tier 4, Tavern 4. Naga, 2 attack, 8 health, Spellcraft, giving minion 1-1 one, one, and Wind Fury until next turn. This one seems blatantly underpowered to me. Like, this could have been a way better stat line. 2-8 stat line is spicy. That's different. We don't have a lot of 2-8s, right? Like, this number doesn't really exist, but 1-1 one, one and Wind Fury as a spell seems very underwhelming. Now, that being said, it, this one seems like a very useful tech card late game to cycle. Say, for example, you know that your opponent is running a taunted Mechro board. Being able to play this card and then sell it from the board to give a first position minion Wind Fury can be, you know, game-changing, right? But this card existing on your board for a very long time feels a little bit harder to use, unless you have a lot of spells saved up that you can use to buff on this. Say, for example, you have a Shoal Commander, and you had, like, I don't know, a Storm Sail Sky Siren and a Snail Cavalry, or whatever it might be. And this thing passively buffs itself 1-1 one, one in Wind Fury, you give it a 4-4 four, four buff from one spell and, like, two more attack. Then suddenly you've invested a lot of resources on this, but the 8 health stat line makes it very, very, very useful because it can like triple or quadruple trade in the right situations. It's kind of like when you make a big bonker, and a big bonker can be an oppressive force in games. Alright, even tied Brute, Tavern 4, Naga 5 health, 4 attack, or 5 attack, 4 health. Bofer, don't get ahead of yourself. After you cast a spell, gain 1-1. One, one. Hmm, permanent scaling. On the pace of like Gold Grubber. Yeah, we've fallen out of love with Gold Grubber and Buddy Meta because the scaling just paled in comparison to what you were able to get off of Buddies. But Buddies are gone. Scaling is back, and scaling in any form in the middle of the game is very, very, very strong. Especially after a couple turns where this thing goes from a 5 4 to like a 9 8, and then suddenly is a 13 12, and you've only invested nothing. Nothing after you originally picked it up for the three gold to make that big minion. At the right time, this card is super duper strong. Very similar to the four star that they just removed, Champion or Yashiraj, which scaled at a rate of, you know, basically one one per taunt on your board. This thing is gonna scale at a rate of basically one one per Naga spellcraft minion on your board. And synergizes very heavily with blood gems as well. So anytime that you gain spells, that could be any spell. That could be a blood gem, that could be a coin. Say you had, for example, pirates generating coins, or you are Mukla. Mukla's gonna love this, this card, right? Because Mukla gets to generate two spells through his hand per turn for one gold. Lord Barov loves cards like this, because you get coins to your hand. There's a lot of synergies that exist with this card. It's gonna be very, very strong in the right, right situations. And honestly, there aren't gonna be that many situations where it's not a good pickup. Very, very, very strong card. Eelbound Archer. I just read like Elven Archer whenever I see the Archer. Tier 4, Naga. 4 attack, 4 health. Spellcraft, give a minion 1 attack until next turn. 1 attack. That number is not 1, Bofer. That number is 8. Give a minion 8 attack until next turn. Alright, well, we can see where this is going. Stat line on a Tavern 4 minion's terrible, right? A 4-4? Four, four? But it's actually like a 12-4. Not only that, but it's targetable where you want. So like 8 attack on, say, for example, a body that has 8 health is significantly better. 8 attack on a Divine Shield, super good. 8 attack on a minion that potentially keeps, permanently keeps, buffs on it, is busted levels of strong. There are a lot of ways that these Avenge spells are going to... Avenge spells. Spellcraft spells are going to snowball when you have a lot of Naga on the board. Good, situationally useful, not great if you do not have a good way to use it. Effectively, if you have a Divine Shield on the board or you have like one good target, this card becomes playable. If you don't, not a great card. But overall, you more likely than not have a good way to make use of an eight attack spell in the middle of the game. Reef Explorer, 
four tier four three three discover a minion battle cry discover a minion from a type that you don't control what a weird card not tribal the minion type that it discovers has been talked about a little bit here if you do have all five tribes in it will always summon an amalgam a nightmare amalgam or always uh give you discover that amalgam so you always get a card no matter what it's an interesting card i'm not seeing how this one is broken but i may be wrong here anything that gives you the ability to tutor cards usually has an application but a card that's a 3-3 that you're spending 3 gold on to get 2 gold back off of is only really that strong if you have open board spaces. Say for example you go to 4-on-4, four four, this is one of the best cards in the game when you have a bunch of open board spaces. Or you Jeef curve to 4 very quickly because you get the gold back and you get a lot of stats on the board. But unless you have a synergy that you're really looking for on a tribe that you're missing, Seems like it'd be good on Wagtoggle Buddy if that buddy was still in the game. I'm trying to think, like, what are these useful places for this card? And even then, it's just like a one gold minion of a different tribe, so it's not really that strong. I don't know. This one is uh, a giant question mark for me. I'm not sure what they're designing here, but I'm interested to see how it plays out. Maybe uh, people in comments, you guys can enlighten me with you, what you think are uh, good application areas for this. Leroy the Reckless aka gas coiler's new best friend this card is incredibly strong this is spore on steroids a lot of people have pointed out rightfully so that it is not better than spore in all situations you can't divine shield it and get extra value etc etc but yeah we got rid of spore and we brought in leroy basically taking its place now we get to destroy a minion that kills the leroy if a soul juggler juggles it the soul juggler dies if a Prester's Pyrospawn kills it with its initial attack, the Prester's dies. If this thing runs into a Divine Shield Poison, it kills the Divine Shield Poison, regardless if the Divine Shield is removed or not. It gets to destroy whatever kills it. Very, very, very useful. And like I alluded to with the first sentence, this thing is a Death Rattle minion. It means it can pop out of Gas Coilers. You're going to see some very funny cheese lines that happen where you can't kill a big minion. You throw the Coiler on the board and you pray that Leroy comes out of it. It's very much like the old, like old, old, old school Sneed plus Kangor's scam comp when you used to have a line that got you to uh, my Exnas out of the Sneeds because it was a legendary minion. And if you were fighting something that was a cheese comp that was all big stats, then you could try to pray for that, you know, that Coiler out of the Death Rattle or Coiler, the my Exnas out of the Death Rattles. Now Coiler is going to be able to drop Leroy and do a very similar, so a similar goal in a pinch. It's kind of like that, you know, the 5% out that you go for if you're absolutely out of a game. Leroy out of Gas Coiler. Super value. All right, Critter Wrangler. Tavern 5, 5 attack, 7 health. After you cast a Spellcraft spell on a minion, give it plus 2-2. Two, two. All right, you can see where that's going, right? Like, this is obvious synergies. After you cast a Spellcraft spell on a minion, give it 2-2 two, two permanently because it's during the, the buy phase. All of those Spellcraft minions are generating spells. You're getting extra spells off of the Discover or the Avenge minion, potentially. Whoop, there it is. Pashmar. I got to learn the names of the cards. Yeah, scaling in the form of Nagas on Tavern 5. Appropriately Tavern card, good stat line. Looks pretty strong. We'll see how that one, the final boards for Nagas play out, but in a vacuum, looks like a pretty strong card. Corrupted Myrmidon. Two attack, two health, start of combat, double this minion's stats. Very, 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 very awkward card. It's a Naga. Start of combat, double stats means that it doesn't keep the stats at the end of combat. So if you're sitting out there thinking initially, ooh, this thing gets huge over time. No, no, it doesn't double stats to a 2-4-4, then to an 8-8, then to a 16-16. It loses those stats. So basically any buff that you put on this thing gets double effect. So if you can give it a 2-2 buff, instead of it being a 4-4, it'll be an 8-8. So like, pretty cool. You get extra effect from the buffs. So you get like, this thing is a 4-4, four four, it turns into an 8-8 eight eight with the first 2-2 two two buff. If you give it blood gems or whatever it might be, you basically build a big minion. Seems like it is not going to scale to a level that will make it super relevant. I don't see this thing being overly strong. It probably could have been a 3-3 three three initially. 
maybe even a 4-4, maybe not a 4-4, maybe that's too much to be an 8-8 for the first combat. Seems like a tough one. Seems a little underpowered to me. We will see, though. It is tribal, and it fits a board in a pinch where other things wouldn't typically fit if you need a Naga tribe, say, for example, for a Light Fang board or something like that. Seems okay. An above-average minion for those kind of applications. Glow Scale. My vote for probably the most busted thing here. We will see, but there are a couple heroes that are super, super, super excited, salivating at the idea of glow scale existing in the game. Tavern 5, 4, 6 minion spellcraft. Give a minion divine shield until next turn. So this minion is a targetable selfless hero that can't synergize with, de with uh, death rattles. But there are also a lot of heroes in the game that get two maxed out positions in the middle of the game and can bank these things. Remember, you don't have to keep a spellcraft minion on the board to take advantage of it. You can play it like a battle cry, the turn where you want to use it. And heroes like Gallywix that get 20, 30, 40 gold by the end of the game are going to love seeing a glow scale in a tavern, just cycle it for a free divine shield for the turn, and keep moving on with their life. Think about those late game Nomi boards with Gallywix where you're cycling for like 50 boards because you get tons of rerolls. Now you have a two gold divine shield minion that you can just buy and put on the board every time you see it and then sell it immediately, because you don't care. You don't need this thing for next turn, you're gonna go find three more next turn anyway. And instead of you having a bunch of Divine Shield random minions, or a bunch of random minions, you now have a bunch of Divine Shield random minions. It's not like Gallywix needed more help, but cards like this are super, super, super good for heavy cyclers, and rewards playing ahead. It's kinda of like buying up a ghoul early when you know there's a George in the lobby. If you know you need Divine Shield against a specific person, you can hold this card for a turn, and then play it against them. Or you can make use of it on the board for multiple turns. Very flexible. It also is a taunt minion, which in a pinch may be very useful. All right, now the Tavern Sixes. Tide Mistress Athissa, seven, eight, or a six, tier six, seven, eight. After you cast a spell, give four friendly Naga plus one, one. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Turns out that uh, all of the things together, culminating with this kind of minion, if you have a couple Naga on the board, especially things that keep permanent buffs, for example, like Lava Lurker or some of those premium Spellcraft minions, then you generate a couple Spellcraft spells, you get extra 1-1s one -ones on each of them each turn, you get the passive scaling, maybe you synergize with Blood Gems, maybe you do blah, 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 blah. You can see where this is going. It's just all spells that the tribe is generating, and then this gives you permanent stats for them. Hit this thing early, steer into it, especially if you get, say, for example, two of them on the board that can occupy two of the slots. You can even cycle every Naga Spellcraft minion that you see to generate a spell for a turn to take additional 4-4. Four four. There's a lot of reasons why this is very, very strong. And definitely busted on certain heroes. Like, you think of Mukla and Barov as generating easy, cheap spells. Yeah, it's gonna be real good. Orozo Orgozoa, the Tender. Tier 6, 5 attack, 9 health, discover a Naga. Spellcraft, discover a Naga. Basically, you now have a minion that's generating more minions, a snowball effect, very similar to the concept of, say for example, um, my god, I can't think of it, Nosy Looter. Nosy Looter generating extra golden minions every other turn. This one is discovering a minion of a specific tribe when you have synergies based upon, say for example, Athissa, say for example Lava Lurker, then getting a hold of the right Nagas can give you permanent stats that are very useful in targeted specific situations. You can give you another Divine Shield, which is probably the best hit in the game for a turn, etc, etc, etc. Dark Gaze Elder. Now this is the card that's replacing Flat Tusk. Remember, Flat Tusk is gone for Tavern 6. This is a Cool Boar card. After you spend 4 gold, play a Blood Gem on 4 friendly Cool Boar. Number one, they headed off the idea that you could play synergies with like Athissa here with Flat Tusk to generate tons and tons of spells. Makes sense, right? No more Blood Gems being added to your hand via Flat Tusk. But this card is sleeper OP. There are a lot of people I've seen out there on the interwebs that are saying this thing is not good. This is busted in the right scenarios. This is a Hogger card. You know the meme build? pseudo meme of you get a hold of APM pirates, you get a hold of Golden Hogger and you play toward Calicos because you're capable of making a better board against certain people. Say you get uh, you know Golden Calicos and other Calicos, two more dragons on the board, you cycle Battlecry pirates and you go infinite. 
and then you sell off the hogger in the long run replace with nadina like you may not have seen this build a lot but it's a like a competitively viable build when you're trying to counter things that are divine shield boards and you can't win because they're pressed through comps now this is like you know we're kind of talking high level optimization strat here this right here is another way to accomplish something very very similar instead of having the line that you can only play hogger through like say for example salty looters and peggies it used to be you could play if you didn't get a hold of those you could play into like a malgadon for example in bran and then pivot that direction now you also have the quillbore option if quillbores are in as well and you just get a hold of these guys like one or two of these and a couple decent minions like bristleback knight for example <clears throat> has just returned one of the premier minions in the game a double divine shield minion even tough tusk in a pinch and you just build gigantic divine shield minions and this guy in triplicate eventually not to mention that you can play this kind of card in a menagerie board you can play this kind of guy i'm not saying like you know we want to go all wide all different tribes but you can play it along with say for example duo or whatever in menagerie you can play it toward agam menagerie which obviously makes the most sense right dark gaze elder plus agam plus whatever that these kind of flexible cards are very 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 nice this is a ton of scaling a six seven body initially that then just generates in the range of like a 12 12 buff a turn is very 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 strong and snowballs pretty hard last but not least second to last but not least Mantic Queen, Tavern 6, 5 attack, 5 health, Poisonous start of combat, for each of your minion types gain plus 5-5, five, five, Wind Fury, Divine Shield, or Taunt. This is the Amalgadon replacement. No tribe, cannot get the same buff multiple times except for the 5-5, five, five, just like any keyword. Once you have Wind Fury, you can't adapt Wind Fury, for example, on Amalgadon. It's not like you saw an Amalgadon adapt 5 times Wind Fury and sit there and do nothing. So in other words, if you Argus this thing, it can no longer get Taunt. If you give it Divine Shield, it can no longer get Divine Shield. If you give it Wind Fury, you can no longer get Wind Fury. So you can increase your chance of getting whatever adapts that you're looking for by giving it buffs up front. Long story short, this is going to create Divine Shield Poisons again on Tavern 6. It naturally has Poisonous. And it can have Divine Shield randomly. Get a couple tribes on the board, and this is a very good card. It's going to be very awkward to play, though, because you don't know whether or not it's going to have Divine Shield. You don't know whether or not it's going to have Wind Fury or Taunt or whatever that keyword might be. It can just get really unlucky in the late game, have four adapts and hit all five fives. Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Very strong card in the right situations. Very weak in the wrong ones. You can't stack these things like Amalgadons because since this thing is not tribal, a board full of Manted Queens is pretty terrible, right? It's just a poison minion. A one Manted Queen with like Menagerie around it is a very strong card. Pretty cool. Pretty good ad adaptation for the Amalgadon thought process that we need Poison Divine Shield kind of existing in the game to combat Ultra Scaling, which is heavily combated by removing buddies, which is, you know, clap, clap, clap. That needed to happen. But now's the time to remove Amalgadon if we're going to remove buddies and then replace it with something that's interesting like this. I really like the change overall. And last but not least, Young Murkai, Tavern 6, Murloc. This is replacing Seafood Slinger. 8 attack, 5 health, then your turn adjacent Murloc minions trigger their battle cries. So you can think of putting this thing in between like a Primal Fin and a, a Gurgle, and you generate a free minion and then like a 2-2 buff to the board or whatever. It's a premium Murloc to exist on your board. The people that hate on this card say that scaling isn't that high. Remember, most of the Murlocs that you have on your board, they don't have effects once they're played. So like you end up with, say for example, like a war leader just chilling there in the middle of the game. Would you rather have a war leader or would you rather have a Murkai? We'd obviously rather have the Murkai. The criticism is rightfully used because scaling this late in the game for like a 2-2 or whatever is not enough to justify playing this card and replacing stats on the board. If you get it in aggressive time and you're playing Murlocs and you get to keep it on the board, then great. It's a premium Murloc to be on your board. But if you have five big Murlocs and a Bran and you're cycling that slot and you get a Murkai, it's going to take a lot to justify keeping this thing on the board and selling off like a 50 health Murloc, right? Like that's not gonna happen. So kind of snowball-y, kind of nice for Murlocs to have another way to get extra stats. But overall, I don't see this thing being ultra impactful. Cool card, Seafood Slinger had to go. It says tier six Murloc that's actually a Murloc this time. We'll see, I may be underselling it, but overall I don't think it's super impactful. All right, that will do on the patch review. 
There are a couple little things at the end, like uh, bug fixes and whatnot. There's one here that is Battlegrounds oriented with the Dark Moon Prize for Ticketus Time Thief was bugging out. This one was a very annoying problem. You can go through all these if you care, but overall nothing like major changing bug fix wise for Battlegrounds. This patch, like I said, will be live in approximately 24 hours. We'll be live on the 10th of May. And then we have a couple days to figure out how to play this new patch for Lobby Legends. It's going to be a lot of fun. As I briefly stated in the middle of the this video, I will be live on Twitch about, I don't know, half an hour after this video goes live. We're going to be doing patch review, discussion, Q&A practically the entire day. It's a fun day to theory craft. And I'll probably post an additional video this evening with like a consolidated version of what I think on each hero or each new unit and like a numeric ranking or whatever for them. Because I think those kind of videos help a lot more than like the rambling thoughts on the patch. This is 40 minutes, right? 40 minutes of thinking about the patch. A five to 10 minute video that's like, this is a five star minion. This is a four star minion, you know? This is a decent minion. Some people like that kind of stuff. So we'll probably do supplemental content there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out today. Uh, as always, and that's it. Honestly, I, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna say like, subscribe, blah 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 blah. No, 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 no. I'm out of here. See ya. Peace. Have a great time with the patch. Peace.